What's up guys, it's Waggish American here today with another model build. And today I'm going to be building the Tamiya 148 skill Fake Wolf FW190 D9. As usual, I started the build in the cockpit. I actually built this model some time ago, so the cockpit isn't done to my typical standards now. Additionally, detail here is fairly sparse, but in 190s, especially in the Doras, the cockpit is nearly invisible. After priming all interior parts with Tamiya Primer, I sprayed all cockpit pieces with Tamiya German Grey. You might want to add in a drop or two of deck tan. Straight from the bottle, I think that this color is a bit too dark for the late war interior color. After painting the dials black, I used a thin brush to try and paint the dial faces white. At this point, when I had built this kit, I didn't yet know about using dry brushing to do control panels. Uh, that should give you some idea regarding how long ago this build was started. After letting the far too faint oil wash dry, I dry brushed the cockpit interior with a Vallejo light gray. While I let the flat coat dry, I went ahead and glued the two fuselage halves together. Unlike most World War II plane kits, the cockpit is actually installed after the fuselage is assembled. I also prepared the wings for attachment. By attaching the instrument panel, the cockpit tub was completed. Before I could finish assembly of the fuselage, I had to add seat belts. Looking at pictures of the real aircraft, the seat belts don't look even remotely similar to what I did on the model. For one thing, the tape looked too bright, so I painted over with a darker tan and that helped. But the bigger problem was the way the belts lie. Uh, this is a lesson. Always, always, always check your references, because it is egregious how far off this is. Finally, I glued the tub into place within the finished fuselage segment. I then went on to complete the construction of the main airframe, starting with attaching the wings. This was the only place the kit I had a little bit of a hard time with. Um, the fit wasn't fantastic, and significant putty was needed under the nose at the wing root. While I waited for that to set, I assembled and built the radiator and cowl. You can paint it at this step, though visibility was poor enough that I didn't think any detail painting would be noticeable. I also assembled the propeller. This was a straightforward assembly with no flash or filler needed.
When I recorded these segments, I was still trying to pre-shade using the black coat followed with a marble of light gray and a top coat of the actual paint color. Uh, since recording, now remember I recorded this several months ago, I've pretty much abandoned this method of pre-shading. I'm working on some projects right now that show how to do it more properly, but in, in the instant, unless I've got one of my videos linked in the description, I'd advise you check out a guy called Dugues Models. Uh, as far as I can tell, he's one of the pioneers of the black basing technique, and he employs it to incredible uh, results on, on all of his projects, so link in the description. All of the colors that I used for this build were Vallejo Model Air RLM colors. The bottom was RLM 76 and I'm drawing a blank right now as to what the top colors were. I had a pretty di difficult time uh, figuring out what colors they were supposed to be because the colors are only listed in the instructions as Tamiya spray cans. So I, I went off of what I found other people's callouts online. I don't know if I use the correct gray. It could have been this gray, or it could have been a lighter gray. According to what I read online, I went for the darker one. I think it looks all right, but I'm not sure it was correct. Since the marbling technique had basically completely failed on, on this part of the, the aircraft, I tried using some post shading to, add, to, uh, fix, to fix the kind of plainness that it had. I dropped a couple drops of white into my paint cup, stirred it up, and lightly sprayed over the center of the panel lines. And I think this actually came out looking alright in most places. I don't prefer it to the pr look of a properly marbled finish but it, it looks a lot better than it looked before I, I went with that. So if you get stuck on these colors doing something like this, just drop a couple pieces of white in and you're good to go. After a coat of Tamiya Clear had dried, I began to fight the, the kit's decals. They were printed well, admittedly, uh, they were very clean, clean edges, and surprisingly, they actually attached to the surface fairly well. Of course though, being Tamiya, none of them had any interest in conforming to any of the panel lines. Um, I did use Microset and Microsol, 
I think what I've been reading online is probably correct. You've got to use Tamiya's mark fit stuff to get Tamiya's decals to conform. So before I do another Tamiya kit, I have to pick some of that stuff up. The decal situation in these is getting to be very annoying. Hey guys, I'm jumping into the video real quick to talk about something infuriating and also one of probably the biggest modeling mojo saps, I think. These awful bands. This is after setting for over 12 hours with decal solvents and stuff. Now we all know Tamiya decals have never been good. I think that's a pretty well known fact. But these are on a whole other level. I don't think they even designed these bands around uh, this kit. I, th I think it's basically just fan fiction, the shape of these, the shape of these bands. So yeah, that's a big bummer. So what I think I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take some, I'm gonna show you how to remove decals when they come out like this. I'm gonna mask it off, spray it myself before I put any more decals on. And we'll go from there. All right, back to the video. To remove the decal, I used a piece of Tamiya tape to quickly rip the decal away from the model surface. Once it was removed, I masked off the band, sprayed Tamiya flat black, then masked off the band again and sprayed Tamiya flat white. The flat black unified the two colors it was being sprayed over, and the white uh, actually sprays really well over black. This gave a much better result than the decal, and I think knowing this I would have just gone for this the first time. Even if the decal worked, I think painted on and decal just don't really compete. After two coats of Tamiya Flat Clear thinned 50-50 dried, I went to work on the final sub-assemblies. The landing gear went together well, and the final assembly of these parts makes it very difficult to get the angles wrong as long as you pay attention to the directions. I used poly cement instead of super glue to give myself a little bit of wiggle room, um, but this ended up being way too loose due to, I think, paint getting into the landing gear, the little pin area. So I ended up actually tearing them out and redoing them in super glue. As the landing gear set, I attached and painted the final smaller external details, um, mostly antenna, and I also at this stage went ahead and made and painted the replacement landing gear um, indicator pin things on the upper surface of the wings. After a bit of weathering with the airbrush, I used crystal clear to glue the canopy into place. Once this had set, I attached the radio wire using easy line and a very carefully applied dab of super glue, and the build was completed. Alright guys, here's the finished product. I'm not, 
uh, too dissatisfied with it. It's not my worst model. It's not my best model either, though. The shading method worked better on this plane than it has on some of my 72nd scale ones, which which is nice. Um, a big thing I learned to do on this one that I haven't really messed around with before is using airbrushing to do these like gun and exhaust. This side's not a great example, but exhaust stains. There's a couple points points that I messed up on uh, the aerial. I lost I lost the pitot tube. So I made some on a stretch sprue, and there it goes. So I'll have to make some more of that later. I already got pictures though, so that's fine. The antenna was done with the easy line, which always works well. Um, the only thing to really look out for in this kit, I have some wobble going on in the landing gear that I can't really figure out where it's from. And it's not done much to damage it. I've glued both of them with super glue, and they've had more than 24 hours to sit, so I don't know where that wobble is coming from but as far as finishing I made the one big error I actually put this on Instagram to ask people about it uh, I went I got a bit too excited on the chipping on this side of the rear cockpit I had seen some pictures with that area chipped chipped up really bad but and I went for it I don't think that turned out very good I think it kinda kills the whole piece actually but I put a poll up on Instagram asking if I should leave it or make a tarp for it and people voted to leave it so uh, people have spoken. It's going to stay like this, unless it gets thrown in diorama at some point. We'll see. The only thing I think you really need to change on the kit, the kit comes with tiny little stubs for landing gear indicators. I made some, I, I cut them off, made some on a stretch sprue and painted them correctly. Uh, this is much more accurate, but ever, there are many well-known accuracy issues. So if you're going for the most accurate 190, the Tamiya one's not for you. Uh, the Edward one is where you want to go. But it's a good kit, fits well, uh, it was fun to do. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. If you want to see more, hit the subscribe button, maybe hit the notification button, leave a like, comment, I'll, I always answer those, uh, send me an email, whatever. And I'll see you guys next time. Hey guys, I just had to jump back into my video really quickly at the end. As I was editing, I realized I wanted to ask this. Um, what you see on the screen is two pictures. The bottom one is as it comes out of my camera stock on these dark colored models like these late war German things. The top one is with some new photo settings I found. Just wondering what you think of them. I personally like the new photo settings. I think they show off more color. They show the weathering a bit better. Um, the white's a little washed out. I'm working on building a new light box in addition to my quest to get a better microphone. So, uh, love to hear your comments on that. Stay tuned for more and thanks for hanging over at the end here. In my mom.